past the bearings that we have been building are what we would call thrust bearings. And these bearings are bearings that take loads in a thrust direction. And these were the first bearings that we uh, produced. This new bearing line are radial bearings and uh, they take the load in a radial direction. And it's unique for diamond because it requires that we shape and machine the diamond in new ways and that we employ new brazing techniques and other things that make these diamonds difficult to build, these diamond bearings difficult to build. I think uh, people would be surprised at what diamond bearings can handle in terms of load. People aren't used to diamond as an, in, an engineering material. It's really not in the engineering textbooks as something that's commonly used because it's more exotic and, and, and expensive. Uh, in terms of, some, for example, a thrust bearing, we have what we call PV values. Those are pressure velocity values, pressure times velocity, that are many times what are people expect in a normal thrust bearing many times higher. So we can handle higher loads because diamond is such a good thermal or heat conductor, we can also handle uh, faster speeds. Well, <clears throat> what would a harsh environment be like down hole? If you think of a hole in the ground that's fluid filled, that's maybe 10,000 feet deep, and that you're con consistently pumping this fluid through, and then you have a drill st string that is sitting in that, fluid and turning around. First of all, you have the hydrostatic pressure that uh, the drill string is sitting in at the bottom of the 10,000 foot hole. That might be approximately 5,000 psi. So you have an ambient pressure of 5,000 psi. Then around that, you have fluid that's circulating at high velocities. And that fluid is uh, laden with abrasives. So any metal part that sees the fluid running by it would tend to erode and eventually disintegrate. In addition, that drill stream can be turning at a high velocity. And so it'll be rattling around or vibrating around in this drill hole and it will be rubbing and banging against hard rock. And so as it does that, anything that's there will be subject to severe vibration and shock. And then finally, in some situations, in some drill holes, the deeper you go, you have high temperatures. Well, we have had some people run these uh, radial bearings. One of the things, one of the places they're used is what, in what we call bent housing subs. These are a special type of drilling motor that has a curve right at the end, a bend right at the end that's used to, to drill off uh, in a directional way. Because it has that curve in the end, by its very uh, places the bearing under high loads and high, pro and high radial loads. Typical bearings that are made now often fail or erode away under those circumstances. These diamond bearings that were placed in that environment performed very well. They lasted for hundreds of hours without uh, failure. In fact, when they took these motors apart and examined them, they found that there was hardly anywhere at all. We're not the first ones to think of radial bearings. I think that people up to 10 to 15 years ago had thought of diamond radial bearings. But they built them and because they were so difficult to build, they didn't either work well or they were so expensive that they weren't economically feasible. And so what we have been able to do is use some innovative manufacturing techniques and some innovative process techniques that allow us to build these bearings. In terms of the diamond bearing, I would say what diamond bearings allow you to do is they allow you to uh, control the geometry of the motor without having such a long bearing section. So we believe that this will allow for a more accurate wellbore trajectory and will facilitate directional drilling, make it more accurate. Well, there is a potential cost savings because, for instance, let's say that your directional well consists of a vertical section followed by a curved section. There have been instances where they drill down with a the motor 
in the uh, or a typical directional well is they have a vertical section, a curved section, and then they might have what they call a longer straight tangent section. In order to drill a curved section, they have to have a, quite a large bend sometimes in the motor. So they'll go in and they'll put this motor in the well. They'll drill that bend, but then in order to drill a straight section that follows it, the bend is too great in the motor, and, it, and to rotate that motor and drill that section would place undue stress on the motor and on the drill bit. So they have to make a trip and pull that motor out, put another motor in that has a smaller bend. If you have a small bit to bend length, the thinking is, is that they could drill that bend with one motor, keep that motor in, and then continue on drilling the straight section. So it would eliminate a trip. Mm -hmm. We're looking at several applications. We hope that someday we get these bearings into any application where it's expensive to replace the product, where you can have just a little bit of friction and you're okay, and you can cool them, and where the loads are high, and where you need, you need the condition of abrasion resistance. In those conditions, and then that would be pl probably places where you have uh, bearings that are cooled with process fluids. So we can think of pump applications that might fit that category. We can think of applications in heavy equipment that might fit that category. You know, potentially wind turbines might fit that category. There's even underwater turbines for power generation that might fit that category.